get your reactions ready. The live portion of the show will begin in just a moment. Today is Wednesday, June 14th, and it's game two of a two-game set between the Yankees and the Mets. A premier pitching matchup on paper, Garrett Cole versus Justin Verlander. My recap and your reactions coming up next. This is NYY Recaps. Welcome to Yankee Stadium. Just when they thought I was out, they pull me back in. <laughs> Yikes. Well, that was no fun. Never fun to get walked off, especially by the uh, rival Mets. Hey, quick note, limited highlights tonight because it was an ESPN game, and when it's on ESPN, they don't upload the highlights on the MLB film room. Uh, They still haven't uploaded the walk-off, so I just left it off. I figured you guys wouldn't want to watch it 100 times anyway. I usually don't include the opposing team's walk-offs. Uh, since this is a Yankee podcast, and I don't want people to close it out after watching the podcast, like you know, you know, watching it loop through three or four times. So uh, I uh, decided to leave it out. As I mentioned in the intro, tonight was a pretty great pitching matchup. Uh, you got Garrett Cole, who look had a tough May, but has really been putting it back together lately, and he had a really good fastball tonight. You also had Justin Verlander, who has not been pitching well, but always gives the Yankees trouble. And he gave the Yankees trouble once again tonight. Uh, But before we get to the recap, and this was not a fun game to recap. It was not a fun game to watch. It was a low-scoring game. uh, And um, just just not a great time. (laughs) Uh, But before we get to the recap, there's a few things that we got to talk about. First of all, on the injury front, Harrison Bader played in a double-A game tonight. He went 0 for 4. But he's being activated on Friday at Fenway Park. So the Yankees have tomorrow off, and then they will play a series in Boston against the Red Sox. And it's worth noting that we still don't have a target date for Aaron Judge, which is frustrating. The longer the delay, the more it makes me feel like it might be like a PR way of not discouraging people from or, or, or a PR way of, uh, of essentially keeping people buying tickets on the thought that they might see Judge. They don't want to discourage people from attending because Judge is going to be out. You know, if they think he's going to be out in August, you know, till August, they don't want to come out and say that because that's potentially millions in ticket sales. People who aren't going to take their kid to the first game because they don't want to go to a game where Aaron Judge isn't in in the lineup. And because the tickets are so expensive, you know, a lot of people can't go more than once. So uh, I think the Yankees are being a little bit cagey to keep the ticket sales coming in. Uh, and without a timetable, th- I mean, it's been it's been a while now. Without a timetable, I'm beginning to get worried, to get very concerned that he could be out a long time. A long time. So keep an eye on that. Just feels a little fishy. Uh, Josh Pedraza says, this team is doomed. Yikes. Main story before today's game was the changes to Anthony Volpe's stance. We talked about this a little bit last night. He clearly closed himself off a little bit more in his stance, something that he was apparently doing last season in the minor leagues. And we saw it a little bit in spring training and, you know, he looked great in spring training and it wasn't our hitting coach that figured this out. It was Austin Wells over chicken Parmesan and a highlight session. My contention is that a major change to the way the guy is set up is not something that should be first noticed by your double-A catcher. The hitting coach has got to be on top of this type of stuff. There's no reason that the video guy shouldn't have a standard still frame of every hitter's optimum stance from a time when they're feeling good at the plate so that when they're struggling, you can overlay it on a guy's current stance and see what's different on any given day of the season. Don Mattingly used to say that the job of a hitting coach was keeping slumps as short as possible. And if you're prepared and you understand a swing, you can do that. 
Getting out of slumps shouldn't be guesswork. It should be strategic. Let's look at what you were swinging at when you were hitting the ball well. Let's look at where you were standing in the box. What were you thinking? What was it going through your mind? As much time as Dylan Lawson spends staring at an iPad, I'm shocked that he didn't notice that all of last year and all through spring training, Volpe was much more closed off at the plate. His job is to know these things. Full stop. And he should be taking notes from the players, asking them very detailed questions when they're going well. What are you thinking up there? What are you feeling mechanically when he gets beat? What happened? These are the jobs that a hitting coach has to keep developing and, 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 and essentially he needs to be a keeper of all of the information. And the fact that our double A catcher just, you know, discovered this change in the batting stance, whether or not it turned Volpe around is irrelevant. The fact that Lawson didn't notice this and, and have Volpe fix it is very discouraging to me. Is he fixed in one day? Probably not. But just knowing that he was set up completely different, you know, it could be the mental boost that he needs to start swinging the bat a little bit better. And he had a decent night tonight. Worth noting, he hit the ball hard to right field a couple of times, something we have not seen much recently. Tommy C. says, yesterday the Mets lost to the Mets. Today the Yankees lost to the Yankees. Both teams tried really hard to lose <laughs> – both games. Yikes. Appreciate that. And Stone Cold says that Donaldson has become a guaranteed out. He can't hit. Oops. He can't hit for nothing. So on to the recap. Uh, this was one of those nights where the pitching matchup, you know, lived up to his billing, uh, to its billing. Garrett Cole specifically looked fantastic. Retired the first 12 hitters in a row. The fastball was crisp. But ultimately, he did blink first. Two doubles in the bottom of the fifth. Francisco Lindor and Tommy Pham. Mets went up one nothing. Top of the sixth, Yankees bounced right back. Leadoff double from Trevino. Then Anthony Volpe had a very good at-bat. Swung in a couple of tough curveballs, but then he, he you know, kind of hung with the at-bat and hit a ball with authority to right field. That advanced Trevino to third. That's the type of thing that doesn't necessarily show up in the batting average or uh, in the box score, but it was a good professional at bat. Next hitter was Jake Bowers. He picked up an RBI single to tie up the game at one. Uh, he's got 14 ribbies now, continues to impress, made a couple of nice plays in the outfield. Mets got out of the inning on a great around the horn double play. Stanton smoked a 118 mile an hour shot to third. But Escobar picked it nicely, and Jeff McNeil made an awesome turn at second base. Mets threatened again in the sixth, put two men on, but Garrett Cole pitched out of it. Got to credit Garrett Cole for kind of dialing it up when he got into trouble tonight. Something we haven't really been able to see from him, you know, over the last, I don't know, several starts. He just hasn't had that extra gear since he went on that cold streak. Also, someone pointed out, I forget who, he hasn't gone seven innings in a while, so that's worth noting. Tonight, six innings, final line, four runs or four hits, one run, no walks, eight strikeouts. Pitched well enough to win, but the bullpen couldn't hold it. Top seven, Donaldson walked and Rizzo got hit by a pitch. And then Isaiah Kiner Falefa almost bounced into an inning ending double play, but the throw got by the first baseman, and the Yankees took a two to one lead. And then IKF stole second, advanced to third on a bad throw, and then stole home. Unreal. Unreal. I was ready to give him the belt if uh, if the Yankees had hung on because that was a huge play. Kind of reminded me of when Bryce Harper did it against Cole Hamels on Sunday Night Baseball. You guys remember that? Hamels was unhappy with Bryce Harper because Harper was kind of a cocky kid when he first came up, which I learned recently is the abbreviated version of Cockshore from a previous podcast. Throwing back a little fan service there. Um, but he uh he took home and and he made it really no problem. So hell of a job by IKF. Also, Carl Ravich had no idea how to say Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Isaiah Kiner for Haru just 
Didn't sound. A what? Had trouble. Had trouble all night. Uh, in the eighth inning, Anthony Volpe led off with a hard line drive double to right. Or sorry, was it a single or a double? I, I think it was a double. Yeah, double to right field. Um, I had single in my notes, but it was a double. And um, it was his eighth double of the year. And it was a nice kind of inside-out piece of hitting to right field, almost a Jeterian type of hit. So, you know, a lot of positives. Hitting the ball hard with authority to right field. James Augustine says, if we had actual outfielders, we win three to one. You know, I thought Bowers made some nice plays. I don't I don't know if he would have caught that one uh, at the end of the game there. Pamela says that Abreu should have been left in. We will get there. Tommy Canely had a very good bottom of the eighth inning. Uh, he is still unscored upon. Abreu pitched well tonight. He threw one and a third with two strikeouts, and he was pumped. He was showing the emotion. DJ doubled in the top of the ninth, but the Yankees didn't score. They also didn't score their Manfred man in the 10th inning. But the Mets got theirs in, and they walked it off to even up the series and force the split. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Lori C says Willie Calhoun is a pinch hitter. Willie Calhoun pinch hit for Trevino. And as much as we want to bang on Willie Calhoun for not being much of a hitter, he's hitting 238 with a 720 OPS. And Jose Trevino is hitting 217 with a 577 OPS. Now, if you want to say the bench is weak, I hear you. I hear you. I can I can I can deal there. Um, Ian RL says Volpe needs to bunt and so does Bowers in the eighth horrible job. So the, ultimately I think the manager leaves it up to the players in that situation. You don't want to necessarily call for the bunt there because you have a chance to make a, make it a crooked inning. Uh, you don't typically play for one at home. The, the, the home team has the advantage of doing that in the bottom half if you don't score. But, um, I kind of like the, I, I, I wanted him to swing there. You know, I thought he had good at-bats tonight. He'd been hitting the ball hard. You could see that, you know, the first pitch, I believe, maybe the second pitch, he fouled it off hard to right field. You could see he was making a clear effort to go to right field, take a good approach, but ultimately he got beat on a pretty good cutter. So, hey, look, you win some, you lose some, and sometimes it rains. Take a look at the box score tonight, uh, brought to you by Game Time. So I mention this every night. They are a sponsor for the next several episodes. Game Time is an app that you can use to get last-minute tickets. Someone messaged me tonight because they were putting in the code. They weren't sure where to put it in. You have to go to your settings and then type in where it says redeem code, NYY recaps. And then the $20 off will come off of your tickets. And as I mentioned, every night you can get not only sports, and there are a lot of sports, everything from you know, baseball, basketball, hockey, to like minor league sports. They have like the Durham Bulls the uh, uh, th that are right near me. They have the uh, Carolina Mudcats. Uh, it, I think they have college sports. They got a lot of great sports on there. Cancellation protection. So if it gets rained out, no big deal. And again, number one fastest growing ticket app in the world for a reason. Uh, download the Game Time app. Use the code NYY Recaps for twenty dollars off. All right. So Bowers had a hit tonight. He was one for five. Lemayhew had a hit. McKinney had two hits. He continues to swing the bat well, hitting three twenty. Trevino had a hit, and Volpe had a hit, and that was it. Yankees had just six hits on the night. Let's see how many strikeouts they had. Let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten strikeouts. And Verlander didn't even have his. You know, strikeout pitch going. He only struck out six in six innings. But again, he owns the Yankees. Every time he pitches against us, he figures out a way. You know, he, he the Yankees are like a comfortable old shoe to him. You know, he doesn't feel any pressure at all pitching against the Yankees. Let me fix my camera here while I, while I got this going. Just... Just a second. There we go. I haven't liked how it's lined up on this screen for the last couple of days. but uh, uh, Wayne says, Bowers is a fine fielder and 
keeps evolving. I got to say, I agree. I think he looks good out there. I think he looks solid. I like his swing, too. He doesn't look bad at the plate. He makes contact. Um, Alan says, we should have left Abreu in there. Abreu had good stuff tonight. You know, it's it's easy to second guess, but it seemed like the bullpen was kind of burned out tonight. With a day off tomorrow, I think um, you probably could have been a little bit more aggressive. But that's just how Boone does things. Uh, Tyler says, we blame Boone for the bad decision. Andrew says, bring back Joey Gallo. I don't think so. Hi, 12397 says, call up Jason Dominguez. So Jason had another hit tonight. Still hitting only about, you know, maybe 210 or so. You'd like to see him really get it going, you know, some here, sometime here in the near future. Um, it's been a couple of months. I guess, you know, batting averages are down all over double A. But you really want to see this kid um, get some success, you know. Uh, James said that Bowers had a bad break on that last ball tonight. I couldn't tell the break. As soon as it was hit, I knew the game was over. And uh, I'm surprised it stayed in the ballpark, honestly. So you got to be playing in a little bit there because there's a runner on – on second base, so there's already a runner in scoring position. It's what they call a do-or-die situation. If there's a base hit, he needs to come charging and, you know, basically scoop up with one hand and shovel pass to his to his backhand and, and, and come up throwing and try and nail the runner at home. And you want to give yourself an advantage on that base hit by playing in a little bit. Uh, but if the ball's hit over your head, I mean, there's really nothing you can do about that. He should have said to... Uh, um, you know, Ramirez, what's the ball doing way out there? So, uh, Ramirez doesn't impress me all that much. Nez Levy says, where is Matt Crook? Does he even exist? <laughs> Haven't seen him. <laughs> Joey Gallo says, someone ask for me? Nope, go away. Shut up, bitch. Richard C. says, what's the deal with Floreal? Isn't he a great outfielder? Supposedly, you know, I didn't think he was, you know, that bad in center field. I, I saw a lot of people critiquing his center field ability last year. I know he he, he messed up a few times. I, you know, I think he's a good outfielder. Problem is he can't hit. You know, he crushes mediocre pitching at uh, AAA. 90 to 93 mile an hour straight fastballs that are down the middle. He won't miss them. He'll crush them. But you start throwing mid to upper 90s. Or introduce some wicked breaking stuff. He has no clue. Game over, man. Game We're over. We're going to wrap it up pretty early tonight. Get out of here. Panelist says Cole pitched a really gritty game today. I agree. Lori C says Chloe Gallo. You gotta go, you and gotta Tommy go. C says bring back Rortbet. So Rortbet is on the IL again. Most impressive. Rortbet is on the seven day IL. Uh, in AAA. So. Ball game over. Most impressive.